Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and um, and you know, reference back to some of the super weather. We're having earthquakes all over the world. Really strange weather, and in fact, not just strange, but cataclysmic, biblical-like weather. And to give us an update, we have Michael Pan calling in from Adelaide, Australia, that listens regularly to the program. Uh, Michael, tell us, uh, this is an intro to the next topic by Freeman. What's happening down there? What happened? I, we have the link posted up with the YouTube clip, and I looked at it and I said, man, this looks like uh, a storm right out of the Bible. I mean, it's mind-blowing. Some of the hail were golf ball size, but there are some apparently as big as a baseball uh, or even larger. And then yes, giant, uh, giant storms of rain, supercells that are very reminiscent to the times where you have a deluge drop, you know, <laughs> you know, Noah-type flooding, uh, unbelievable. So what, what happened? Good morning, Dr. Bill. Um, this was in Melbourne recently in the past week. Uh, there was flash flooding in the CBD, which was just amazing when I saw the footage on uh, the news. And it's the biggest floods they've had in over 100 years. And yes, in some parts, the uh, the hail was the size of tennis balls, and um, there were car yards that were just totally destroyed and millions of dollars damage done. And uh, when you look at the footage on the YouTube um, video that you posted, you can see within minutes the streets in the city of Melbourne, which is a major Australian city, literally turn into a river. And it's just unbelievable uh, that we're seeing this kind of thing happening in major cities in Australia. Now, uh, to explain, uh, and this includes information that's classified, here's how they did it, um, it when they want to control the weather. Now, this weather can be spontaneous because we're moving into the what's called a photon belt of the galaxy, which is a debris belt, it's a belt where there are cosmic particles. Uh, and uh, those particles actually, actually, as the as a nuclei, micronuclei, to actually start formation of rain. Um, so what we're having is strange activity of the jet stream because the magnetic field is fluxing and changing significantly. And the jet stream itself is an ion field up in the upper troposphere. So whether it happened naturally or it's manipulated, when it's manipulated, they create like a pinwheel through the plasma interferometry that pulls the storm cells toward a central point. They're curved little like a pinwheel that you would hold up in the wind and it pulls those storm cells toward a central point. Once they start to gather, you can then move that pinwheel around like a, with a joystick by moving that plasma interferometry field. The evidence is, from my sources, which in some of them are classified, is that there was a battle between a one rogue division of the uh, these letter agencies pushing this right over New Orleans, and then another group of individuals that were pushing it away, which is why it had anomalous uh, tracking behavior. Uh, when you have supercells like this develop over large population areas, at the same time Central Australia is suffering the worst drought in 100 years, wiping out 93% of the uh, gray, of the grassy crops like uh, grains like wheat, you've got something really evil afoot here. And uh, there's very strong evidence that besides the earth changes that are natural, this is being tweaked by globals that intend on really terrorizing the population using weather as a weapon. Uh, Absolutely, and, and I think that this is uh, something. That's why they have a department in, in the Congress for weather modification, and then we have apologists trying to tell us that it's a good idea to put nanoparticles, thorium, when one in fifty thorium atoms is radioisotope, nanoparticle barium that's ten thousand times more neurotoxic than lead, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, aluminum, aluminum nanoparticles, which of course cross the blood-brain barrier and cause oxidative stress and peroxynatriate radicals that cause death in neurons. Uh, you know, this is not funny. This is pretty serious stuff. And we have globalists that think it's quite funny to use the Earth for imaging, using torsional vortex imaging or creating plasma fields that they can create a nuclear-type level in terms of devastation, plasma explosion, up to and exceeding 100 megatons. So people think that this is all airy-fairy and we're dreaming out here. You're wrong. And uh, the weather has been is totally in control. They've literally turned the planet into a weapon of mass destruction. Mm, people in Australia have still got their heads buried in the sand, though. Well, they may, they may, have, it, <clears throat> they may have it buried in a different anatomical part. 
if you know what I mean. It's sleeping, that's for sure. Well, actually, they have to be intellectual contortionists not to look at this and ask questions of if someone, and it may not even be in their country, there's at least five countries with some class of weather modification technology. The Brazilians, for example, had a large cyclone heading toward uh, their large city of Sao Paulo, which is 22 million plus people. Uh, this is about a decade ago, and the Russians called them up and said, we, look, we see from satellite, because they have their own satellites, this giant cyclone heading straight for you. We can fly in a, our you know, air flot jets with our antennas, and we can move it offshore. And they just told them how much money it was. And, you know, I mean, this is reality. This is in the open media. People need to understand when we set up the Ho Chi Minh Trail with giant super cells of weather and precipitated massive rainstorms, we did that back in the 1960s. That's like 40-some years ago. Well, just over the past year or so in Australia, I've noticed personally dramatic changes in the overall weather patterns, especially in summer, where we used to just have heat waves that would last for weeks. And uh, this last summer that's just gone, we would have three to five days of 35 to 40 degrees, uh, major heat waves, and then it would absolutely bucket down with rain for a couple of days, and then we'd be back again to a heat wave. And we've never experienced that kind of thing before, but people just are so blasé about the whole thing, and uh, they're not looking at the, the deeper meaning of what's going on. Exactly, exactly that. Very good comments. Uh, stay there, Michael. I'd like you to uh, comment, Freeman, because a good segue to your next uh, analysis of what's going on. Yes, definitely. Well, there is so much to this, and when we start to realize that, as you were saying, we are entering an energetic field in space, uh, the, the Hubble just sent returned photos of Pluto turning red. Uh, when you look into, as I was tracking in the 90s, uh, solar cycle 23, as it was reaching its peak towards 2000, you would clearly see a, a connection between the solar flare eruption and then massive superstorms <laughs> on planet Earth three days later. Well, as I've been tracking recently with Sun Cycle 24, as it's been so erratic and even dead quiet, which is even scarier because that means the eruptions will be even larger when they do come. Now we're moving from uh, into the apex of Sun Cycle 24, but we're finding that the solar flares now take five days to reach planet Earth. So there is an energetic field that we are entering. This is provable scientifically. We can see all of that. We can see it with the planet's heating. We can see it with these uh, effects. But on top of that, we're dealing with uh, ISCAT, SURA, HARP, uh, and all of these ionospheric heaters or large radio antenna transmitters that are acting basically as ground-based solar flares and interacting with the ionosphere in a negative fashion. That's a good way to look at them because they are ground-based solar flares and they can bounce off an image around the world and they can also directly affect it and move the jet stream precipitating major changes uh, in the Earth's climate. Well, why do you think El Nino hit Hugo Chavez as he started announcing HARP was causing earthquakes? Uh, you know, yeah, like, let's yeah, shut yeah. that guy up. But who's held accountable, right? We're left with that question because there's an ionospheric heater in every nation, uh, in, you know, at least established you know, major nations. And uh, NASA is now setting up a whole new, and this was the story that we were going to get into, a uh, uh, beam wave guide deep space network antennas. And the first one to be set up is there in Canberra in Australia. So I don't know if uh, Michael was watching and, and saw maybe my report on the effects from the satellite view in Australia, uh, the strange droid eye, we covered it, Dr. Deagle, on a show, that uh, came up over Australia and was taken by satellite, satellite photograph. Now there's been a number of these, and you can go find these anomalous satellite photos over Australia. But the first one that I noted was directly over a hexagonal antenna array, which is run by Boeing right there in uh, Australia. They also have Project Wormwood there that is watching for this next sun to come through, uh, and a number of crazy and amazing things going on in Australia. But yes, you... I was actually online when uh, when that was happening, the anomalies on the uh, radar maps. And uh, I didn't see the one in Melbourne, but I was online when the one in Broome, Western Australia, was happening. And I actually rang the Bureau of Meteorology and asked them what was going on. And uh, the guy just gave me some excuse that uh, it, it's a problem with the radar system. But then oh, about yeah. four or five of them happened. Sure. Stay right there. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 